721 in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, let's let's get an update now from the Community Recovery uh, Committee set up by the Prime Minister to specifically treat with issues affecting at-risk youth uh, in uh, their respective communities. The 10-member committee was formed in the immediate aftermath of the protest action in downtown Port of Spain and in a few other areas around the capital city. The chairman of the committee, Anthony Watkins, and uh, another general member of the committee, Curtis Tusa, uh, joined us this morning. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Mr. Watkins, if I could start with, with, with you, first of all, as chairman, the cynical view, well, this, this was all about playing politics, to appear to be doing something ahead of a general election to make sure that the, the PNM got back in power. That was achieved. So are you all actually doing anything right now? <laughs> yes, Vazir. We are, we are very hard at work. And I, I understand the cynical view, and that certainly wasn't my view. But yes, we are hard at work. Hard at work doing what? All right. So when we when we look at the, the mandate, we would have met and with the prime minister and discussed what the, the intent and the mandate was and looked at, of course, what was the note coming out of cabinet that defined what our task was. We have a number of communities that we need to treat with, particularly the, the youth who are at risk, but really in a, a broader way, the whole notion of community recovery. Our first zone of, of activity, of course, is going to be in the East Port of Spain, Laventil, Mova area. It's not the only one that we're going to be working at over the months and, and over the years, we'll be moving into other areas as well. But what we had to do initially was to find out what are some of the things that are happening in the community in terms of who is doing what. And what we discovered, in fact, that there were many organizations, many business organizations, many NGOs, faith-based organizations, and government departments that actually have programming going on in the community. So we had to wrap our minds around what is being done in the community. The other piece of it, though, is that we also had to, be, to, to talk to people in the communities to find out what was happening with them and what some of their needs were. So we have been doing, looking at sort of what exists, We've been going through a lot of the, the reports and the research on what these organizations would have done, the kind of impact they would have had. But we are also on the ground going out to different communities, meeting with people, of course, all complying with COVID-19 restrictions and finding out from them what is their sense of what they may need, what community recovery meet, needs for them. And we're beginning to do some of our programming around that. Let me get to, to Curtis to say so as a sort of behind the scenes were going on over the last few months. Sure. Uh, let, let me get to Curtis to say to get get your perspective because again the, the concern will be are you going over ground that has been trodden already? Like for example, the citizen security program of which Gregory Sloan Seal was actively involved in and would have uh, done a lot of research and, and a, a tremendous amount of work in that area, other community groups and so on. Uh, so Mr. Tusa, in, in that sense, are you are you more or less going over the beaten path once more? Um, no, Fazir. Um, and, and part of the reason why I could say no is because the committee is not in the business of frontline delivery. So, of course, organizations like Citizen Security, we, we would have certainly gotten information from them and understand what they've been doing, what they are going to continue to do, and, and even doing presently. Because what as as mr watkins identified when we go into the community um you you see what you see what the issues are or you hear that from the community but there are also people who are there working and um one of the things we've been doing is certainly talking with all the stakeholders community stakeholders business stakeholders just to get a sense of what is happening what has been working what additional support may be needed and of course to bring some closer collaboration and a more strategic approach to what is done in the community. So it's not, necessarily, it's not repeating or, or, as you said, um, trotting the, the beaten path in terms of the community, um, sorry, the committee and what we are doing, but we are looking at all the pieces that are currently there, but not fit together yet to give a, a, a whole frame that will allow for community recovery to take place. So it's just really um, coordinating at, at, at this phase getting the information and coordinating some of the activities and groups that are working so that they could have even greater impact. And, and because, Mr. Tusa, it's a process and you, you won't necessarily see the immediate benefit of it, nevertheless, are you, are you satisfied that, that this entire uh, effort is, is, is heading in the right direction, is, is bearing fruit? Because we, we're talking about communities that have had challenges, not just for years, but for decades. Yes. 
So yes, Fazir, um, you see, one of the things is this, once you begin opening up the dialogue and the conversation is happening, you're able to see what 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 solutions already exist because sometimes the solutions are there and people are just not able to connect with it in the way that is in a way that is meaningful um so so yeah certainly we, we have been able to connect some communities with resources um have opened dialogue with with agencies that should be providing services in the community um, and, and just bringing some of those immediate relief items, you know, bringing them up to the forefront, having those conversations started and ensuring that the community knows what they know, the stakeholders who are responsible for dealing with different things, because sometimes that that is part of the challenge. There is a level of, of, of ignorance with regards to which agency should be dealing with, with which issues. So once that kind of a um, strategic alignment is made you know this is the agency that deals with this issue because you could have people knocking on the wrong door for for you know for a period of time and not getting the the, the answers to the questions that they're asking and, and it's really just pointing them in the right direction in some regard and, and mr watkins if i could get back to you how do you measure the success of this particular initiative are there specific timelines by which you have to achieve certain deliverables uh, because as uh, i suppose from 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 the the view of the general public the issue will be how you even know if you're achieving what you want to achieve as far as those specific timelines yeah okay so so and I'm, I'm happy you asked that for you because you know we we not in a sense uh, what i can say we're not confused by the illusion of the instant so this is this is long term medium to long term work let us talk first of all about what and how we framed it in terms of what community recovery is. And we have identified that in four broad clusters. One of them, of course, is community pride and ownership. In that, we're looking at issues like the history, individual success, infrastructure improvement, inclusion in opportunities. We're also looking at social support and cohesion, families, leaders in the group's community activities, human development in terms of education, training, employability, physical and mental health, and of course, business and economic development. Developing new businesses, entrepreneurship, mainstreaming current businesses, and the issues of employment. What we are doing, there are two lines of research that we have identified. And one of them is around perceptions. So we've already framed what that research is going to be. And uh, what we're going to be doing is looking at how is does the community see itself? How does the rest of the society see the community? and uh, how does the community see the rest of society we're going to be engaging in some research which will provide us with some baseline data in the now and that is really about perceptions and attitude oh, of course a year two years three years from now we will be revisiting that research to see what has changed there the other aspect of it though those four areas that i just talked about community pride and ownership social support and cohesion human development and business and economic development we are at this point defining what the observable and measurables are. So as we do that, we're going to be defining what those things are, do some research within the next couple of months in terms of the current state and have that as baseline data, which we will be looking at a year, two years, three years from now. So we want to be very much research and data driven in terms of what we do and not just the question of feel good. As I say, you know, the people who are delivering frontline services, Curtis referred to it, they will continue to do what we have to do. We may suggest new interventions. We may suggest certain kinds of collaboration. We may put certain kinds of people together. But we're going to be looking at how we can enhance impact in the community. And very importantly, how we're going to be measuring that. And, and, and that's, that's, that's something that, that I'd like to spend a couple of minutes on as well with you, Mr. Watkins, as far as uh, getting a sense as to whether or not you might be on the right track. Because some people may say, well, those issues that you, that you raised about how does the community see itself? How do the, the people on the outside see the community? How people on the inside see the people outside? Some say, we know the answer to that already, but I understand the value of doing the research to get the hard data. But having, if, if, if and when that is completed, how confident are you that that data will be enacted upon? Because again, forgive the cynicism, but we have a history of, of books and volumes of studies done gathering dust all over the place. Yes. Well, well you know, uh, Fazir, I remember shortly after the committee was appointed, I got a couple of emails from people who were thoughtful and erudite and who indicated to me, well, another committee. This committee is not going to be another committee. We are focused on being in the community and we've been out there. We've been engaging with people. 
we are going to be linking people to the resources we are going to be doing that kind of work and of course supporting the work of what other people do we have issues around for example when we talk about business development are there particular projects that we may be able to facilitate in terms of establishing businesses creating economic activity inside there so we are a working committee and uh, uh, we were very the, the prime minister was very clear when he spoke with us when he said listen he wants he doesn't want a report he wants working solutions that are sustainable that's going to be our framework that's our lens and that's how we're going to be doing our work i guess time and the national community will judge what the impact has been absolutely uh, we, because uh, everything unfolds in time and, and curtis too so when when, when you, it's framed in that way about you know getting transformation that that uh, over, over a period of time uh, are you satisfied that this latest initiative can can actually do that because uh, we've been talking about these at-risk communities. We've been talking about these vulnerable communities. Many different interventions have been tried. Um, and sometimes you wonder, you often hear from people within those communities saying, well, you know, I, I, they, 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 it's misdirected or they're not going to the right people. Uh, are you confident that, that, that in this particular initiative is on, the is on the right track? Because there may be some who will be watching or listening to this discussion right now saying, nobody ever come and talk to me to ask me what's going on in my area. So I don't know where these people are talking about. <laughs> well, Fazir, um, and I'll start with your, with your last contribution first. Um, to that person, I would say we probably haven't spoken to you as yet. Um, but certainly, I, I believe that the, the, the effort will bring fruit. But, but the bigger question is, can we afford not to? So even though there have been efforts in the past that, that some may feel have not borne fruit, and I'm sure that, that every effort would have successfully treated with, with somebody's issue and brought some sort of relief or recovery. What we're trying to do is, is identify those programs that have brought the relief and of course scale them up so that you, know, you can certainly affect a greater number of people and, and get that kind of a... Um, snowballing effect where you begin to impact people at the individual level at the family level and and it snowballs to having a greater impact at the community level but i think it would be um, a grave grave error to not try and so for the committee it, it is really us now pulling together those who have been trying in the past and bring a, a, a better sort of cohesion and, and strategic overview to the entire thing so i, I I'm, I'm i'm pretty confident in the approach and um, like Mr. Watkins said, you know, time will tell, but certainly I know the community will be better for our efforts. And, and Mr. Watkins, if someone watching or listening right now and say, well, look, I want to reach out to the committee. I have a contribution to make. I want to make a, a submission or a recommendation or maybe even tell my story. Uh, if it is that we're talking about, you know, understanding the history of the, of the different at-risk communities and so on. How do people reach out to this committee, Mr. Watkins? All right. Well, let, let me tell you, in fact, you know, Fazi, a lot of people have done that at the establishment of the committee. I mean, there are quite a few people who have called and, and want to contribute, and we anticipate that more of that will happen. Our email address is as follows. It's connect at, recover, at communityrecovery.gov.tt. Connect at communityrecovery.gov.tt. And we, what we've been doing is, is meeting with people and talking with people who are may, wanting to make a contribution, finding out where their skill is and pointing them and connecting them and linking them with particular agencies that are doing the kind of work that they want to do. So we're strengthening agencies that are already on the ground and we're giving people who want to contribute an opportunity to make their difference via these already established organizations we're not going to be duplicating stuff in fact we'll be pointing out duplication and engaging with, with with people who are delivering service to minimize that and to get the greatest impact for the service that they do in the community so it's connect at communityrecovery.gov.tt uh, just yes, uh, make sure that we get that right has COVID-19 uh, impacted seriously on the work of the committee yes it has and one of the things, I mean, we were looking at, say, August and, and through most of September to be out into our communities in a very active way and, and meet. We, we have the list of the people we're going to be meeting with, but right now we just have to be prepping to meet. As, as you say, you know, we can't meet everybody and we haven't met everybody because of the size of the groups. Some we've been meeting online, but we prefer to go out, but it of necessity has to be very small groups 
we have to be clear and, and sure that the space we're meeting in is well ventilated and allows for the physical distancing and so on. So that has hampered our outreach into the community. But I must say that those places that we have gone to, the results and the impact and the response, while there is some suspicion, some cynicism, there's also a significant amount of hope and very importantly, passion and resilience from the people in the communities to do better for those communities. Are you disheartened by that at all, Mr. Watkins? If, when you, if, you, if you know you're having a dialogue with somebody and somebody might have said, yeah, maybe in a cruder way than what I would have said at the start of the show. But Anthony Watkins, don't waste my time with, 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 with what Rowley come in here with to try and get my vote or whatever. <laughs> are, are, are you well, disheartened by some of those it, attitudes? We, we hear it all the time, you know. Yeah. So listen, so, so, I mean, some people say, okay, so we hear all your um, people like all your come here already, you know. When we see all your again, we hear it. The point is, are we committed to and are we passionate for what it is that has to be done? We know the value of it. We know the danger of not addressing the work. And I must say to you that all the members on the committee are driven to do this. Yes, we run into those things. We support one another through it. And we will, we will go forward in faith with some courage because it's not going to be an easy task. But we, we, we will get it done. I'll, I'll let me get a final thought. Let me get a final thought as well from Curtis too, sir. Because uh, Curtis, you, you you raised the point that look, you know, um, that, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it will be about results and, and, and deliverables in the end. And and the fact is that uh, the results are there. If you if you look at it, uh, it's kind of like the West Indies women's cricket analogy. All the fancy talk you could talk, they lost five nil to England. You can't you can't change that. In the same way, these communities are as they are, and that is why we had the explosion uh, in, in July, We're ref representing a lot of frustration. So the evidence is there as to what the circumstances are. Is there a, is there a, 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 a willingness to actually appreciate that? Because often you hear people saying, well, you know, it ain't that bad and all, and, and trying to, to sweet soap the thing. Is there, for, very quickly, if you would allow me, is there a real appreciation of the scope of the challenge before you even start to deal with the challenge? Oh sure, oh sure, Fazir. Um, when when we speak to members of the community, they are quite aware of what the issues are, and and I think sometimes better than we may think. Um, of course, when you have the the kind of explosion that happened in, in earlier on before the um, before the election, certainly it, it does cast a particular shadow. But the the resilience, the the will to do better. Um, having groups that are, you know, coming forward and saying, listen, we want to be a part of your solution. I'm talking about groups that exist within the community coming forward. It, it tells me that they are quite aware of where the community is at, and they're also quite aware of the work to be done. Um, and, and in that regard, they are hopeful. Um, some of them cautiously hopeful, but they, they are hopeful that the committee will stay true to its work and see through this process in, in working with the community, not just working in, but working alongside the community to help them um, reimagine what their future can be. And for those who have been successful, to help them reinvest into the community. Well, Curtis to say and Chairman Anthony Watkins, we appreciate you taking the time uh, the, this morning to give us an update on the work of uh, the Community Recovery Committee. And again, you can reach them at connect at communityrecovery.gov.tt. That's connect at communityrecovery.gov.tt. As we go to the break at 7.40, let's give you a couple images sent to us uh, by a, a resident of Chrissy Terrace. It's a, a butterfly resting comfortably on a leaf following afternoon rains. And uh, the, the looks very impressive, uh, that butterfly. And, and, and no doubt the, the butterflies and other uh, insects and so on, enjoying uh, the fact that all of the rains are, are allowing for more foliage, more insects uh, coming around as well. As we go towards 7.41, let's take a break here on Morning Edition. It's really gonna raise you.